Lower gastrointestinal bleeding refers to the loss of blood from the gastrointestinal tract distal to the ligament of trites. It has an annual incidence of approximately 109 cases per 100,000 individuals and a mortality rate of less than 1%. This condition occurs more frequently than upper gastrointestinal bleeding. Approximately 80% of episodes resolve without medical intervention. However, it is important to recognize that bleeding from an upper gastrointestinal source remains the most common cause of blood found in the lower gastrointestinal tract. Among patients with confirmed lower gastrointestinal bleeding, the most frequent causes include diverticular disease, colitis, hemorrhoids, and adenomatous polyps or malignancies. Key Definitions Hematochesia refers to bright red or maroon-colored rectal bleeding, typically indicative of a lower gastrointestinal source. When hematochesia originates from an upper gastrointestinal source, it suggests rapid bleeding that may also present with hematemesis and signs of hemodynamic instability. About 10% of hematochesia episodes are associated with upper gastrointestinal bleeding. In contrast, melina, characterized by dark or black-colored stools, usually signifies bleeding from an upper gastrointestinal source, but may also result from slow bleeding in the lower gastrointestinal tract. Common causes of lower gastrointestinal bleeding. Diverticulosis frequently leads to painless bleeding due to erosion into the penetrating artery of a diverticulum. While bleeding episodes can be massive, the majority resolve without intervention. Recurrence occurs in approximately half of affected patients. Although less common, right-sided diverticula are more likely to cause bleeding compared to left-sided ones. Vascular ectasias, including arteriovenous malformations and angiodysplasias, represent another cause of bleeding and may occur in the colon or small intestine. Diagnosis is often challenging as their development is a chronic process that becomes more common with advancing age. Ischemic colitis is the most frequent cause of intestinal ischemia. This condition is typically transient and can be diagnosed using endoscopy. Mesenteric ischemia, on the other hand, can lead to bowel necrosis and requires a high level of clinical suspicion due to its nonspecific presentation, which may mimic other intra-abdominal conditions. Meckel's diverticulum often located in the terminal ileum, is composed of embryonic tissue. More than half of these lesions contain ectopic gastric tissue capable of secreting enzymes, which can cause mucosal erosion and bleeding. Hemorrhoids are the most common source of anorectal bleeding, but rarely result in significant hemorrhage. Diagnosis. The diagnostic process begins with a thorough history. Clinicians should inquire about rectal bleeding characteristics such as hematochesia and melina and associated symptoms, including hypotension, tachycardia, angina, syncope, weakness, or altered mental status. A history of gastrointestinal bleeding, abdominal pain, trauma, or changes in bowel habits should also be evaluated. Medications, particularly antiplatelet agents, nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, and anticoagulants are important contributors. Unintended weight loss or changes in bowel habits may suggest malignancy, while a history of aortic graft placement raises suspicion for an aortoenteric fistula. The physical examination should assess vital signs for evidence of hemodynamic instability, including hypotension, tachycardia, or reduced pulse pressure. Skin pallor signs of liver disease and manifestations of coagulopathy, such as petechiae or purpura, should be noted. Abdominal tenderness, masses, or signs of peritonitis may guide further investigation, and a rectal examination should assess for gross blood, masses, or external hemorrhoids. Bedside endoscopy may help identify hemorrhoidal bleeding. Laboratory evaluation includes complete blood count, coagulation studies, and cross-matching for blood products. Additional tests, such as blood urea nitrogen, creatinine, and electrolytes, may provide supportive information. Imaging modalities, while often limited in value, may assist in specific scenarios such as suspected perforation or obstruction.
Endoscopic or angiographic evaluation is generally tailored based on clinical needs and resource availability. Treatment. Patients with active or unstable bleeding require immediate resuscitation. This includes oxygen supplementation for hypoxic individuals, cardiac monitoring, and large-bore intravenous access for fluid resuscitation with crystalloids. Coagulopathy correction is necessary if the international normalized ratio exceeds 1.5 or platelet counts are below 50,000 per microliter. Blood transfusion decisions should consider ongoing bleeding, hemodynamic instability, and hemoglobin levels with a threshold of 7 grams per deciliter in most patients and lower thresholds for elderly individuals or those with comorbidities. Nasogastric tube placement may aid in identifying upper gastrointestinal sources in patients with significant bleeding or anemia. Early consultation with surgical and gastroenterology specialists is advisable for patients with severe or ongoing bleeding. Endoscopy and surgery. Flexible sigmoidoscopy allows assessment of distal, colonic, and rectal sources, but does not evaluate more proximal sites. Colonoscopy can diagnose and potentially treat bleeding sources using various hemostatic techniques. If the source remains undetermined, upper endoscopy may be performed to evaluate for upper gastrointestinal bleeding. Surgical intervention is reserved for patients with persistent bleeding who do not respond to endoscopic or medical management. Disposition. Patients with significant lower gastrointestinal bleeding often require hospital admission and endoscopic evaluation. Those who are hemodynamically unstable or actively bleeding may need intensive care unit admission. In contrast, individuals with mild bleeding from an identifiable source such as hemorrhoids and without hemodynamic instability or major comorbidities may be candidates for outpatient management. In summary, Lower GI bleeding can manifest as bright red blood, maroon blood, clots, or black tarry stools. Sometimes, bleeding may be occult, presenting as anemia without visible blood in the stool. Common causes of lower GI bleeding include diverticular disease, hemorrhoids, anal fissures, inflammatory bowel disease, polyps, and colorectal cancer. Initial management often involves resuscitation with fluids and blood products, as well as diagnostic tests like colonoscopy or angiography to identify the bleeding source. Treatment options may include endoscopic therapies, medications, or surgery, depending on the specific circumstances. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section.